Have you ever done something that you knew was wrong in the moment, but you couldn't stop yourself, either because of inertia or muscle memory, or maybe you just weren't paying full attention while you were doing it, but as soon as you completed that action, you realized it was the wrong thing to do. Well, I did that with my Nano VNA. I think you can hear something rattling around in there that shouldn't be. So let's head over to the bench. I'll show you what I did wrong and how I plan to dummy proof it. And if you've got one of these Nano VNAs, it may be something that you want to consider doing to yours as well, so you don't end up in the situation that I'm in right now. So here's a look at my Nano VNA. In particular, I want to draw your attention to the SD card slot. You may be able to see here that the actual SD card socket, which is mounted to the inner circuit board, doesn't protrude through the plastic. It's kind of recessed in there and you should be able to see sort of a silver line and that's one of the edges of it. Now, when I went to insert my SD card into the slot, I didn't have it at the exact correct angle. You can see here, I'm kind of doing the same thing I did the other day. And when I stick it in here, there's a little bit of resistance but it's not really in the socket properly. It's actually going behind the socket because the socket doesn't fit exactly correctly to the plastic case. What I ended up doing out of sheer inertia was dropping the SD card into the Nano VNA, but not into the actual SD card socket. And now, it's in there loose and rattling around. So it shouldn't be a big deal to retrieve the SD card. There's just four screws on the back of the Nano VNA here. We'll remove those and I'm assuming the case is just gonna separate and we'll be able to retrieve that card without any issues. But after that, that's where we're gonna fix this problem so that it doesn't happen again. Okay, there's the wayward card. So here's a look inside the Nano VNA in case you've ever wondered what's inside of one. Obviously we've got the two cover pieces. Now there's two SD cards here. This is the one I was using for demonstration purposes and this is the one that had fallen inside. We'll set those both aside for now and we'll take a look at the main circuit board. So here's what the component side of the circuit board looks like. Over here is the main battery. You can see printed on here 3.7 volts and 2000 milliamp hours. It's plugged into the circuit board over here through this connector. You can see there's a few different ICs here, a quad flat pack, a couple of SOICs, and some other popcorn parts, transistors, resistors, capacitors, all the usual stuff that you would expect to find in here. Up here on top, this silver box is the SD card socket. The SD card inserts from here and clicks into place. Up along the top are our controls, the rocker switch and the on off switch. And then over here on the right, you can see there are some shielded cans and presumably there are some RF components inside of there. And then down at the bottom is the USB-C charging and interface socket. If we flip this over, the only thing on the front of the circuit board is really the four inch display. The display isn't soldered directly to the circuit board. You may be able to see on the edge here, there is a flexible circuit board that ties into the display. And if we flip this back over, you can see that that flexible circuit board finds its way back up through another slot here next to the battery and into this ZIF connector. I've put the circuit board back into the back shell so that we can kind of see what's going on here with the alignment of the SD card jack and the case. Now you can see the SD card jack is here mounted flush to the circuit board. So this gap between the silver edge and the bottom of the circuit board is essentially where the SD card is supposed to go. But what you can probably also see is that the gap in the plastic between the bottom of the SD card jack is almost as wide, if not a little bit wider, than the slot for the SD card itself. So that's how I got into trouble. I wasn't exactly paying attention and I started to drop that SD card into the slot, but it was misaligned and went into the back of the unit instead of into the actual jack itself. So I think all we need to do to dummy proof this thing, putting something on the bottom of the SD card jack that takes up that space, but still allows the circuit board to fit nicely into the case. After a little bit of scrounging, I found this foam block that should work perfectly. It's got some PSA adhesive on one side. You can see there's a protective film on there right now. If I slide this in and bring it right next to the switch, you can see that it's just a slight bit thicker than the switch. 
but I think that'll be okay. Even if it interferes with the case, because it's foam, it'll compress down. So I removed the protective film, and I'm gonna drop this right on top of the SD card slot, and I'm gonna try and line it up so that it's right at the edge so that we don't have any potential interference issues. So now let's bring the back cover in and make sure that everything fits the way we expect it to. And if I turn this around, you can see the circuit board is sitting perfectly flat on its mounts. So I think we're good to go. And if I tilt this up, you can see the foam pad in there taking up that extra space where we lost the SD card before. I'm not sure if it's showing up on the camera, but there's just a little bit of dust kind of collected around the edges of the display here where the cover kind of mates up. So I've got this tack cloth here to just kind of clean all that up and make it look nice and new before we put the top cover back on. Now that everything is reassembled, you can see the white strip there is visible taking up all that extra space. And if we bring in an SD card and try and put it in the wrong way, it obviously won't go. It'll only fit into the slot where it's supposed to go. Now, because of that recess, these things are a little hard to click in with your finger, so I always use a pencil like that, but you can see it's locked into place where it belongs, and now we can pop it out of there <laughs> and uh, go take our files off the Nano VNA. There you have it, a quick and easy way to dummy-proof the SD card slot on your Nano VNA. 7.3 if you're a ham, thanks for watching.